Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Very brave and uh, on your part of having brought this um, bill to be considered in front of the committee. So that's why I'm proud this committee is considering H.R. 314, the FORCE Act, a bill I introduced to keep Cuba on the state sponsor of terrorism list until the Cuban regime adopts democratic reforms. Last week here in this hall, I pressed Secretary Blinken to answer whether Cuba had reached the high bar, high bar that it takes to be taken off that list, and he admitted clearly that it has not. So I'm assuming that the Secretary of State is in full support of keeping Cuba on the list of state uh, sponsors of terrorism. And why is that? Because him and I and the whole world knows the truth that Cuba belongs on that list. And let me just explain some, just few of the details why it still belongs on that list. Um, Cuba's regime bankrolls foreign terrorist groups like the ELN in Colombia, like Maduro in Venezuela, in Bolivia, in Nicaragua, and every other dictator it could find in the hemisphere or in Africa. In 2019, this group attacked a police academy. I'm talking about the ELN in Colombia. It attacked a police academy, injuring 68 cadets and killing 22 others. In 2020, they carried 76 massacres, 82 massacres the next year, and Cuba was there helping them. Just last month, it was reported that the ELN was planning more of these terror attacks. But Cuba just doesn't pay for terrorists or helps them. He holds, Cuba also hides them. Best example, the most important example, is an American fugitive called Joanne Chesimard from New Jersey. She, is, she was serving time for shooting a New Jersey police officer at point blank range, execution style. But for almost 40 years, 40, she has lived peacefully in Cuba. The FBI has asked the Cuban regime, specifically Fidel Castro, to send her back. Never. It never happened. Then we have William Morales, a bomb maker from Puerto Rico. He was implicated in over 50 bombings in the 70s. And in one of those bombings, he killed four people and maimed another 50 in the fire. When police went to arrest him, Morales said uh, very happily, they're not going to hold me forever. And he was right. Cuba was there to welcome him with open arms, and he has lived in Cuba ever since. We cannot give the Castro regime an inch, and we are one bad decision away from Russia reopening the Lourdes spy, uh, spy base uh, in Cuba, uh, spy base in Cuba, only 90 miles off the coast of the United States. Therefore, taking Cuba off this list would be the beginning of the end of Latin America. Our hemisphere is already poisoned by the spies in Venezuela and Bolivia. The FORCE Act will put this decision back in the hands of Congress, who will ensure the Libertad Act is obey. And, um, and just to say a few more words, um, when o President Obama established relations with the Cuban regime, specifically with the Castro brothers, it was the perfect moment for that regime, as uh, um, uh, my colleague, Con Congressman Meeks, just pointed out. It was the perfect moment for the Castro regime to prove to the world that they really wanted to engage in the international economic community. President Obama gave everything in exchange of nothing. And three years later, the Castro regime did not open up, not even one inch, what we were expecting on the economic front, what Obama had expected. So it was a major disappointment for the foreign, for the foreign policy for the Obama administration to have given everything in good faith and received nothing back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back.